for Jesus and Mother J.R. Nelson. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of it all, ain't he? He's a good God. We're just minding the Lord. Everybody turn the Bibles to Psalms 117. Psalms 117. Keep your little thing handy there. Psalms 117. Keep your little white thing in your hand. Your right hand. ain't really as big as they seem. 13 and verse 24. Matthew 13 and verse 24 start. God's good to us, ain't He? Yes, sir. The Bible reads like this. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth, the, the, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field from whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them into bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat unto my barn. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. You may be seated. He's a good God, ain't he? Amen. 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 Thinking on this as the Lord deal with us on man, He's really dealt with me on a lot of messages here lately. But this one, I just pray that I said, Lord, I said, I need the message that you want for tonight. And He deal with me on this. And look over somebody and say, That your fruit shall remain. That your fruit shall remain. 
shall remain. Well, now, what does that didn't say nothing about fruit preacher, but I'll get to it. But the Lord's good, and, and we're, we're living in a world now that there's so much backing up. So much backing up. Come on. With the homosexuals and shacking up and drugs and alcohol and cigarettes and beer, all this. So much backing up that's coming right back into the church. Listen, I'm telling you today, once upon a time back in the back in the day, all this stuff, preaching, when they preached, they preached on smoking cigarettes, they preached on drinking beer, they preached on shacking up, they preached on harlotry, they preached on all these things. But today, it's down to the time that you just offend everybody. That you just offend everybody, but I'll tell you what Jesus told me. He said, I didn't come into the world to bring peace. He said, I come to bring a sword. And you know what a sword does? A sword makes division. Today when it come down and I was thinking on the wheat and the tares, there's something there that, that by, he said, let them grow together. And, but it, they asked him, said, you want us to go tire them out? You want us to get them, Master? And he said, no. He said, let them grow together. He said, and then when the time comes, I'll send my reapers and they shall be the one that... He's a good God. But I'm telling you, church, today, He's coming in that field. Praise be to God. The Bible teaches somewhere else during the Gospels that it is the world. This field is the world that we're in. And He explained to us right there that there is the wheat and the tares. And we come, and I know when I was, I was explaining, I was looking at the grass, looking at the crab grass, looking at all the different grasses that's in your garden. And all of them, you know, praise be to God, all them roots is a plum shamble down in there.
Amen. Amen. Put you ain't even here, and I just heard him amen. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. You say, Butch White, sitting around waiting on somebody to get where he's at with God. No, no, sir. You say, Shan Block, sitting around waiting on somebody no. before he started laying hands on somebody. You think A.A. Allen started waiting on somebody before he started healing the sick? Come on. You think, uh, you think R.A. West sitting around waiting on somebody? No, they got down on their knees one day and said, I'm going for you, God, 100%. Oh. I'm going for you all the way. I'm going to live right whether they want to go to hell or not. I want to go to hell. I want to be who you ask me to be. And I want to be the weak, Brother Larry. Yes. I want to be the weak, church. Amen. Yeah, the tears and the weak look very similar. I preached on this for a long time ago. They look very similar. They come up. When well, they're smaller, they're harder to get. You can free to turn the difference up. Uh -huh. When they're smaller, and they're coming up. Come on, yeah. It's when they start budding and bringing forth fruit. It's when you can really start telling the difference between the wheat and the tires. And then there's a, there's a time where they just both stand straight up. Sister, listen. They're standing straight up. They're standing right beside of you. They're sitting beside of you. They're stomping their feet beside of you. They're clapping beside of you. They're speaking in tongues beside of you. They're doing all these things right beside of you. But inside, praise be to God, they're dead men's bones. Inside the Bible says they have a the white as a, as a white sepulcher. But inside is a dead man's bone. And they're living a life, praise be to God, right in here in their mind. And dressing just the way they want to. Talking just the way they want to when they're out of the church. Sale. I've been in a place the past few months. Yeah. And I ain't turned no more. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. I have to say it. You know what makes you feel good? <laughs> Doing good. Amen. You know what make you feel good? Living right. Yes. You know what make you feel good? Start saying no to the things you've been saying yes to. Start telling just the way it is and quit patty kicking around, worrying about other people's feelings. I've never felt so good as I felt in my Come life. On. Hallelujah. I'm telling you tonight, church, I believe God's pleased with a separated people. I'm telling you, my be in that field, but we don't have to be the same thing.
the wheat and the tares here. We're looking at it as physical. Uh -huh. I can take this and cut it down. And then I can separate it. We're looking at it as physical. The same way Jesus is looking at us today. That I can. I have the power to grow my yard. Cut that down and separate this leaf from that leaf. And that from that. But listen today church. There's a chance for the church. There's a chance for the people that wants to become wheat in the spiritual today. I'm telling you. Because that tears, you know what it has inside of it? It has like a black powdery dust. And it said, please be one that studied not to see what was in there. If you eat that stuff, it will kill you. If there's enough of it tucked in, it will kill you. That's up the tires tonight. Let me tell you something. We got people a spitting up things, getting behind here and doing things, and taking standing in a place that they shouldn't even stand, a claiming that they're one thing in God, but out yonder there's something else. Am I one with 
the envy, staying home in the strife, full of the jealousy, can't stand to look at them because they ain't doing this just right or that just right. Come on. Come on. Who am I? Bless him, Lord. I agree with the old people. It should be a certain way. Yes. It should be a certain way. Men should look like men. Women should look like women. Amen. Uh, they're saying places they shouldn't go. the things they shouldn't say. Things they shouldn't be caught doing. Amen. Come on. Caught, I mean, by God's eyes. <laughs> Not just the pastors. I believe in it. All the way. But we're living in such an adulterous, unjust generation. Yeah. they got to be taught everything. From the oldest down to the least, they've got to be taught how to act, how to walk, how to talk. But they need to come to church. Amen. They need to come to church. Yes. And the first thing we want to do when the bump hits the road, you still got your feelings in 117, don't you? Yes, sir. Is it still in there? Amen. First thing we do when the bump hits the road, the shots still pull out, we got to stay at the house. Amen. <laughs> When he said, love ye one another. Come on. Love ye one another. Yes. We'll stand and say this is the feeling station. This is the place things happen. This is where we need to be at hard times. And I tell you, but we stay at home on the couch. Come on. Come on. Come on. That was all hit me today. I laughed at it. I said, women's lit, they all want it. Go come church night, then they can't do nothing about their husbands. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's huh? Yeah. That's the truth. When it comes church night, they can't do nothing without their husbands. Uh -huh. They got to stay home. Oh, I said, you might need a foot trail or something. Yeah. Ooh. It's the truth. Come, come on. on. Preach it. I thought that was pretty good. It was. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Come on, brother. Be who we're supposed to be. All the time. Lord God, if I can't make it here, if it's a stupid reason, tell the pastor the stupid reason. Because the other way is hiding and lying. It is. Had an old pastor one time, he said, You know what an excuse is, son? It's a thin skin over a lie. Right. Camouflage is a lie. Come on, come on. You know what most of my battle was the past two or three months? This ain't nothing to do with me leaving Hamilton Creek. Ain't nothing to do with that stuff. It's me just not wanting to stand. It was me just wanting to not tell what the Lord was doing with me in here. Listen. Your feelings are my feelings. They cost a lot. They cost a lot. Uh -huh. And mine's are just as important as yours. Right. But when it comes down to this, I believe there's a place where Paul told us, he said at one time, she ain't even my wife what time I'm doing this. You ain't my buddy what time I'm doing this. There comes a time in life where we got to take, you got to leave here and say, there with the preacher man. Standing on J.R. And then if Jesus would have come into their country, when Jesus come into their country, if he had left and they said our way God, then there'd have been more miracles in the land. There'd have been more yeah. things happening in the land. But when we preach here, it ain't nothing but old Jr. It ain't nothing but old Pastor Larry. It ain't nothing but old Hunter. Uh -huh. Come on. Bless him, Lord. It's the truth. Come on. Well, it's the word, but we don't need you to make it come fulfilled. That a prophet's without honor, even in their own country. Yeah. We don't need you here in Woodville to make that to come through. There's enough of them out there already making it come through. Uh -huh. Come on. Man. Is that all right? Come on, boys. Yeah. Amen. Preach. Weed in the tires. The fruit shall remain. Yeah. The pastor preached and I've heard him bring it out. Shall there be faith when he comes? He always said, yeah, they are. You know what I agreed with him this morning? <laughs> Why? 
The Lord told me. Come on, folks. That's right. Shall it be faith when he comes? He said, yeah, buddy. He said, there's going to be faith when I come. He showed me through this message. You can call it epiphany or you can call it a revelation. But I like revelation better than epiphany. Why? Because a revelation is what we live by. He told me, he showed me right there. He said, even though the roots are tangled, even though they're side by side, Right. You're waiting to heaven to dress right, you're gonna miss. Yeah, you're gonna miss. If you're waiting to heaven to quit that addict smoking and that chewing and that dope and that drinking, you're gonna miss. Yeah. Why? Because I believe you give us power. Yeah. Power. Yeah. 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 I can't sit and look at a Christian and sympathize about an addiction that they have when we know the power that he's got. Amen. Amen. I was thinking when I said I had meditated on this message. I said, the Lord said, man, y'all give them all kinds of all kinds of mess up through them anymore. You let them mess up, mess up, mess up, mess up. No wonder you stay on the bottle so long. Just give them time. Oh, it's all right. Listen tonight. I'm going to break it to you. Knowing sin is sin. If you're out here doing it through the day, you woke up this morning, you know it's wrong, you're a sinner. You need to come back. You need to do some works over. You need to be born again of the water and the Spirit because I read and I heard. He said if we're born of this uncorruptible seed, by the Word of God, we ain't going to sin. Come on. Are you just call God a liar? No, I'm just rightly dividing. Come on. That spirit that's in me can't sin. That's why when I go to do wrong, it's a bidding on my heart. And it's saying, don't do that. Don't do that. That spirit can't sin. And if I follow that spirit, I will sin. Do you got me yet? Have you got me? If you follow the Holy Ghost that's inside of you, you won't sin. But if you override that man and you start touching that thing, Truth. You know where I was in my valley? In that word. Come on. I said, Lord, you said your word to heal me. Yeah. Come on. Amen. What none of you all cut me? Cut myself. Huh? You ever heard of a suicide spirit in the spirit? Huh? But you know what? He showed me he's God. I trust him that he's God. I always went back to his word when the devil would come and tell me right here. I'd go back to his word, Bobby. I'd go back to his word. And I'd take him back to his word. And I'd go back. I'd keep going back to the well. But I'd keep going back to the well. And I'd keep drawing another drink. And I'd keep drawing another drink. And I'd keep pulling it out of there. I'd keep pulling it out of there. And he'd remind me of these preachers preaching. And my messages that I preach. And he'd bring things back to me. And bring things before me. And I couldn't deny it. And I had to hold to him. And say, God, you are my redeemer. You are the one that brought me out of darkness into your marvelous light. You are the one, glory, hallelujah, that gave you life on Calvary. Oh, I can see the bloodshed on Calvary for me. Just me. Just me. I can 
see it. It's just yours if you want it. Amen. Don't get mad because I said it's just me. It's just yours if you want it. Right. Got a little bit more here. Matthew 3. If you want to go, if you don't, it's fine. It's just one verse. Oh, uh, we got to do something here. Even when it comes down to a baby being born, Jeff, there's stuff on it That's when right. it comes through that. That's right. There's stuff on it and they clean it off. Yeah. They get it off of it. Now listen to you. It says, Whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Yeah. Now this is the time the chaff ain't talking about the tares. The chaff ain't talking about the tares. When this wheat is harvested. Yeah. See everybody's waiting for a time. See he's coming back to take the grain. The grain into the barn. He ain't coming back just to take that whole kernel of wheat. Why? Because there's some chaff on that thing. When he comes forth and it's starting to listen right now. You're on the fleshy floor. You're on the fleshy floor oh. at church. You're on the fleshy yes. floor through the day. You're on the fleshy oh. floor when you wake up in the morning and get in His Word. You're on the fleshy floor when the opportunity presents you to lie and you don't lie. You're on the fleshy floor when they ask you to do something wrong and you say, no, i got to do it right. You're on the fleshy floor yes. when that addiction comes back to you and you say, no, sir, devil, yes. I don't want it. You're on like it cut off. But he's coming back for some wheat that has been in the threshing floor. Some of us is denying the threshing floor. Amen. Please hear me tonight. You're denying the threshing floor. And part of this threshing floor is correction. Part of this flat threshing floor is somebody looking straight at you and telling you what you Come on. Somebody that I'm telling you that's been shown in the spirit of what you truly are, that's part of it. It ain't time to stay home. It's time to hit your knees and say, Lord, if they saw it through you, I want it out of me the next time they see me. But they'll look at me and say, You got that thing taken care of, don't you? No, but we want to hide in the corner and don't want to get rid of it anymore. Because we ain't man or woman enough to get rid of that thing. Amen. Amen. It's the truth. Amen. The threshing floor is a scary place. There's some preachers you just don't want to be around. There's some places you don't want to go. Because you know they're spiritual. Because you know they can read your spirit. They can tell you who you are. What you love. I believe Jesus could tell them, couldn't he? He said, you love your father. The devil. He would tell them they was claiming to be Abraham's seed. They were claiming to be his seed. But he said, if you was Abraham's seed, you'd hear me. You'd know who I am. He said, you know that I am of the Father. The Father's in me. And the things that I say unto you, I've heard of him. And I do nothing of myself. But that's what the Father has sent me and told me to do. And I know him. Come on. It's the truth. But they denied him. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. They denied Him, and that's what we're doing today. When we sit down and we don't take, don't, don't take correction of what they've done, you know what they're doing? Every Pharisee, I believe, to stop following the other Pharisees and start following Jesus, I believe we'll see them one day. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. I believe if we got a bunch of sinners that would start following Jesus, we're going to be with them one day.
one day. If we got a bus to send in the house with a bunch of chaff on you and you won't, I'll bust out that thing. Come on, just to bust out that thing. Oh. And take that thing. I tell you tonight, let the word of God let that fan blow it out of you and get around here. Come on. Amen. Amen. Rejoice in that hard time, son. Rejoice when they talk about you. Rejoice when they say false. seen some of this way he said chaff ain't some he said Bible teachers lay aside every weight Paul's talking about the chaff every weight and the sin that so easily besets us we've got a race to run we do and there ain't no way that you can lay aside this stuff because he gives us in another verse to not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind uh -huh. to prove what's a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Yes. We cannot lay the chaff off being conformed to the world. Why? Because the things of the world is what's the chaff that's hanging all over us. But I'm telling you, the stuff that goes through our minds, goes through our hearts, and we take and think of them through day after day after day. It's taken when they get some chaff off her. Amen. I told my wife, come over. I said, past about a week and a half, I said, I've been able to just meditate on God's Word. I've been able at work to have God's Word. Get started on what I'm doing, push it out, push the Word in. I've been able to do that. Listen tonight. When you've got a treadmill going on in there and the devil's on that treadmill, huh? it's hard to think about something. It's hard to get down. Listen, if you ain't never been there, talk to me after church because I want to know your secret tonight. I'm telling you, when he's, he's the one on the treadmill, he's in there giving you a fit after fit after fit after fit. But let me tell you something. If you go back to him in that time, I believe I'm telling you because I've been shown in this. I know how there's seven more comes back, buddy. I'm telling you. Why? like it. I hope you don't. I hope you don't. I hope I went through it just to help you not to have to go through it. But you know who I'm proud of tonight? Not me. I'm proud of Jesus. Then I said it was Jesus. It was Jesus who would come in the morning. When I'd wake up and go cry in front of that mirror. It was Jesus. It was Jesus our late night. It was Jesus our in the middle of the day. It was Jesus that come back. It was Jesus that said, I'll never leave thee. I'll never forsake thee. He said, I'm going to go all the way with you. He said, it was Jesus, brother. He know my heart. He know, praise be to God, where it needs to be. And all he needed to do, praise be to God, was overcome. And I believe he's the overcomer. That's in me, that through me, for glory, hallelujah, overcome this world. He said, if I overcome the world, you can. likes John. Amen. Listen. That your fruit shall remain. It gives us a comfort. Well, I brought a handkerchief. I need it. John 15. Listen. Sixteen and seventeen. 
Bless you. He says, you've not chosen me. But I've chosen you. Listen. And ordained you. Did you hear that? Ordained you. That you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of my Father, ask of the Father, in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you that you love one another. He come that we'd have life and that we'd have it more abundantly. And he told us right here, he, we didn't choose him. Ronnie, you thought that night you chose to come to the altar. Didn't you? But before you chose to come to the altar, he said, Ronnie, <laughs> before you chose to give your life to he said, Jeff, yeah. he chose you. Oh, but the decision was in my court. You wouldn't have got a decision if you didn't hear it. Right. You wouldn't have got a decision if you didn't know he was there. You wouldn't have had the decision to make if you didn't hear the gospel and it pricked your heart. Amen. That's why they said on the day of Pentecost, me and a brother, what shall we do? They were pricked in their hearts. They heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. They know, they heard right then that he was the Messiah that come from God, that he was the one that came and gave his life for the sins of the world. And they asked, what shall we do? That's why it's so important for Peter to go ahead and say it. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, how much more, in a more important time in anybody's life to hear it is when they are sitting on their seats and they're going, What must I do? I just called my name. I've heard him talk. I've heard his voice. Oh, who was it? He was that preacher man. He's well glory. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh, God, if we can't preach it, you'll never. It comes by that way, whether you like it or not. You can say, I don't like this preacher. I don't like that preacher. But if you ain't got a preacher, you ain't got no ears. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That was hard for me to swallow too. Amen. I want to just sit at home and get it all myself. Won't work. Won't work. It comes by the Bible preaching. It comes by the ordained Word of God. The anointed Word of God from somebody that loves you, cares about you. And you know what? They will stir from every nation that day. The devout men from every nation. And I believe Peter loved every one of them just like his brother. I believe when he stood to preach, said, well, glory. That's how I felt tonight when I come. Lord, I want to reach somebody that the fruit shall remain. I want your fruit to remain, church. When the day of his time is done, I believe when Peter stood on that day of Pentecost, he wanted every devout man there to go back and teach their nation what he preached them that day. Whether they did or whether they didn't, that was up to them today. But I tell you tonight, church, I want you to go home knowing that your fruit shall remain if you'll stay in God and be born of that uncorruptible seed, yes. which is the Word of God. Amen. Your fruit shall remain. Amen. And it's going to be here the day of His coming. It better be here today when he's coming. Listen. Remain is to stay in a given place. Stay in relation or expectancy. There's a place God expects us to be. Abide, continue, dwell, Endure, be present. Amen. When he went by that tree, they should have been fruit there. He said they should have been fruit there. But there wasn't no fruit there. There's one place he cursed that tree, didn't he? And when they come by there, it withered away. Oh, Master, do you know that the tree get cursed? It's gone. Yeah. Amen. It didn't have nothing for him when he come by to eat. He wanted to eat off of that tree. But it wasn't there. Listen. Come on. Not depart. To be held. Kept. 
continually. Remain. Remain. That your fruit shall remain. Uh -huh. You've got to get it in your heart that I am being raised with the tares. You can't get away from it, Sharon. Mm -hmm. There ain't a place that we can go to church saying a tear. There ain't a place that we can't go out in the world that's a tear. There ain't a place that we can go that there's a tear. But you know what the wheat said? When you're still standing there with lay your head up proud, I'm going to be a bowing man. Because when that wheat comes a full maturity, Brother Larry, that wheat starts bowing over his head. And when the reaper goes to her, I'm telling you today, they know exactly which one's of God. They know exactly which one ain't. This, he said he's going to put his goats on the left hand, going to put the sheep on the right hand. There's a separation, Brother Larry. And it's a coming one day. It's a coming, church. You better believe there's a separation coming. And I want to get my separation one time I'm here. I I want to be separated from the world by the word of God. I want to be separated from the past by the word of God. I don't want to have to wait on no reaper to come and get me and bundle me up and cast me into the fire. We better get serious with God. Get filled with that Holy Ghost. Yeah. Got the Holy Ghost, you'll never bow your head. Amen. You'll be proud all your life. Amen. You'll be proud all your life. Oh, I believe I'm deserveable now. As it could be then, you ain't seen that one until God gets a hold of you. Amen. What are you talking about? They spit in his face. They smote him, Brenda. They took his reed and they took the crown of thorns and placed it on his head. And they hit it upon his head. You talking about humbleness. You wait until the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you with humbleness. You talk about a way to treat people. He'll teach you the way to treat people. You think you're humble right now. But when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, it will teach you how to be humble. It will teach you when to speak and when not to speak. These things will happen. All oh, you act like you're just holier than now. Listen, I'm trying to be as holy as I can be. I'm trying to be. I'm doing it the best that I know how. By the word of God. I can listen. I might not be raising the dead. I might not be but healing blinded eyes. But I believe I got the power to live holy. I believe I got a power, praise be to God, to be separated from this world. I believe I've got that and I'm telling you, until each individual in here under the set of my voice, until you get concerned about yourself and your work with God, and praise be to God and separating yourself, and quit trying to be like your neighbor, then pray we'll never have the power to open the blind and eye when we raise the dead today. we got to get concerned about ourselves and take a note where we're at in God. He said the blind, lead the blind. Uh -huh. Come here. Come on, bro. Come here. Watch it. You got it. Watch it. Watch it. Huh? Come on, Rachel. You got a whole of stuff. Come on. That's falling. You're going to fall with it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You're going to fall with it. Yeah. Yep. Come on. Come on. They ain't no, you can't stand there. Right. He said the blind lead the blind. Yep. They'll both fall in the ditch. Yeah. You better grab a hold of somebody that's got a vision. You better grab a hold of somebody that's got a You know who had the vision? He worked, he worked on me on a message. I tell you, I quit studying on it there because he kept moving me on to other things. But it's about a vision of having a greater vision. And that's the vision that Jesus had. He looked down through time and seen Josh Ferry. He seen all the troubles he was going through. He seen everything going to do. And he seen him. Then you know what he said? He said he's going to be behind the pulpit somewhere. He's going to be playing a guitar somewhere. He's going to sing a song for me. That's what the vision that God's got. Yes. And we need that yes. for each other. Yes. We need that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Be concerned about the ones that come to church. Yep. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. <laughs> Come on, sure. Are. They got a chance. Yeah. Whatever the petty reason is, I don't care. God's greater. Yes. They need to be here. They need to be under the first word. Amen. They need to hear what's coming from behind this pulpit. Yes. They need to hear what's coming from these preachers. Yes. They need to hear it today. Come on. Amen. Get concerned. Get concerned. Yeah, 
They're in a very vulnerable state right now. Amen. There was a time in the eagle's nest that they had a beautiful feather bed. Yeah. Then she went in. She turned her upside down, buddy. You can't always stay in the feather bed. Amen. You're going to have to learn there's other eagles. You're going to have to learn if I can't get along with this eagle, one of these will miss out. Where you ones will miss out, Clarence. We don't fix what's going on between us. Amen. Huh? Come on, right? Here you want to be sad. Amen. Hope there ain't nothing wrong with us. <laughs> Somebody's going to be sad. Amen. Come on. Okay? Come on, brother. Well, if it's a tear, Ronnie, go to that tear. Yeah. So I'm sorry, tear. Whoever it is. Do your part. Do your part. But it's got to be fixed. Yes. It's got to be done. He can't come back seeing this. He can't come back. He ain't come back to a bride that's full of envy and full of strife. Yes. Full of idolatry, adultery, fornication, lasciviousness. He ain't coming back for that bride. He's coming back after one that's spotless, without blemish. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, why am I speaking to you? I believe these are the things we have power over. We have power over them. Yeah, it's why He explained us to hit these things, to mortify them and get them out of our life. Because He gave us power to do that, Ronnie. Yeah. He gave us power over this stuff. Or he yeah. never mentioned that we can do it. He just said, I took the adultery on the cross. I took the fornication on the cross. You know what He took on the cross? He took the sins of death on the cross for us that we can overcome this stuff that's in this life that we can make it to the life to come. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <clears throat> he died for the sins of the whole world. He took them if you want to give him. Amen. But if you want to keep your sins, he'll come back and find you with them. And you know what the judgment is? You kept something I took. That's what he said to me that day when I picked up the cigarettes again. I was driving out through her. Quit about two months. He took them from there on a porch in a trailer park. I remember. Trailer park, same bad place. Sitting there on that porch. Smoked that cigarette. Said, I need a cigarette. He said, where's your knees at? What's wrong with me? He said. Then a couple months later, I went to pick them back up. You probably heard this before. I'm telling it again. I went to pick them back up. I bought cigarettes and lighter. Both of them. Didn't have neither one of them. Could have been born off the wife she was smoking at that time. But I didn't. I just got off work. Said I'll just start her up again. Got out there about the curve her from where I worked. Returned, you go to Huntington or go to Route 3. Lit it up. By the time I got out there where Wayne were at, uh, what's that hair place called? Rock and Locks is. I was throwing her out the window. Yeah, you lit her. I don't know, but I got rid of it. But you know what I done? I put that pack of cigarettes. The Lord spoke to me and said, What well, I took and you bring it back. I put it in the dashboard of the car. Now for how long did I there? And they touched one seat. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You can override the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yep. This flesh can override the Holy Ghost. Yep. Yeah. You know in the past time that I, I have figured out when I said, Lord, how can they do it? Now I know how. Yeah. Lord, why did they do it? Now I know why. Did it make me weaker? No, I'm stronger. I'm stronger. But listen, there's times we better watch what we say. Amen. Yes. I'm just helping you. Please let me help you. When you look over and you say, I don't see how they're doing this. And you harp and you harp and you harp. You might get to figure out why and how they did it. And they just wasn't strong enough to overcome. It's the truth. But now I can see how. But I thank God that I overcome. 
And I have been praying, Lord, I was praying of the 40s. Lord, I don't want to have to go through it to see where we're at. Yeah, Humble my heart and show me how to pray without me going through it, please, Lord. Yeah. But He said the judgment we give, and it's going to come back to us. Uh -huh. And it's going to be the same one. It's going to come back to us. Uh -huh. It is. Yep. Sure I'm just being real with you. Y'all's right. my family. You might put up with me here. And I might put up with you. Amen. Are we mutual? Amen. So you got your feelings in there? I love all of you. But if I can't be real here, then who wants to be here? I heard this man right over there say a few times. He said, I just want to go somewhere where I can be who I am in God. Yeah. Who I am in God. I want to be who I am in God. We can put on all kinds of shows. We gotta be who he called us out to be. We do. We gotta be who he called us out to be. But church, there's going to be faith when he comes. And I want it in me. How many wants it in them? Amen. You want me to tell you where it's at? It's in that book. Amen. You know where you hear that book? Here. I know there's other places out there preaching the Word. This is your home church. Okay, if you go over to here, that's fine. Good. Take another night and we can go. But here. This is where you get fed. This is home. This is where the refrigerator is free access. Right? Right? You come here, so it's access. Medicine cabinet, full access. Anything you need, a good drink, full access. Sing a song, full access. Preach a word, access. Here you got it. Right here at home is where it's at. Make sure you support your home. Make sure home is where you come to. When I was going through, Bo said, Son, Bo helped me a lot there. Lord God. He did. I ain't saying that the rest of you did, but son, he ran my jobs. Said you're getting your little pity, whatever, you got to call them to pray for you. I called one person. I did not tell them what I was going through, but I asked them to pray. I called them to spill the beans. Lord wouldn't let me. I just said pray for me. You know who I spilled the beans to? Jesus. But then you know who Jesus said needed to hear it too? Mom. I give it to her to help me. He showed me who I can give it to. I ain't saying I don't trust him. I ain't saying that. I was just in a place I needed somebody visible. And he showed me my best friend here. I haven't got to tell her what she didn't help me with. It's the truth. That's right. He said the mouth of confession is made unto salvation. Uh -huh. I ain't gonna tell you where it was at when it did. It's true. And from that day forward, trap. <laughs> Ask God that for you. Yeah. See, Lord, it's what He preached about. It's way it happened for Him is for me. Don't do it just because I've done it to try. They might get on Facebook and talk about you. Make sure God's in it. That way, man, I don't want her to But God's got a way, church. I might be boring you now, but I told you to put up with me. I love you, and I'm glad you're here. You hear me? But our fruit's got to remain. Listen. Women, we gotta stay women. 
Men, we gotta stay men. There's a lot of people backing out of this dress code. We better start living right. Okay, you hear me? I'm telling you from the bones of my heart. What brings what brings it to his eye when he's coming for the weak and tired? Lord, give me this. The appearance. There's an appearance that separates the weak and the tares. Yeah, they're hard to tell apart, but there's an appearance that he knows the weak from the tares. There he is. Well, he ain't going to see me like that when he comes. He ain't going to see nothing but himself. We've got all kinds of stuff going through this land. Listen, what we are before men here, we're going to be judged by it. Did you hear that? By our works, Brenda, we're going to be judged. By our works. Is dressing right at work? Yes, it is. It is. Just like baptism's a work. It's a work. Repentance is a work. It's all work, church. And whether the book plainly says it or not, if it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Amen. Plain and simple. I don't have to do that word I'm saying. What about the Holy Ghost? He said he'd lead you in all truth. I thought about this. You know in there where he told the rich and you to sue it, sell everything he had and give it to the poor? What if he meant that? You think he meant that? Huh? Don't get in my conviction. You hear me? Leave my conviction alone. If the Lord's dealing with me, I don't you pat me on the back and say you don't have to do it that way. Amen. 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 And I'm going to leave yours alone. You hear me? Because what the Lord's dealing with me on is what I need. Okay? What the Lord's dealing with you on is what you need. Let's not pat each other on the back and get us out of conviction. Our conviction will go bad. You hear me? That's why people ain't got no convictions no more. The preacher's up here killing it. I'm serious. I believe there's some true people at home, Brother Jeff said, and there's convictions hitting their hearts and they come to church and the pastor's killing it. They are. The testimonies of other people's is killing it. Tell them that so they can't be because they're going after what he preached about the other night, traditions of men. Traditions of men. And I heard a wise man once say, he said, what, what bothered you 10 years ago and you went back into it? Amen. You're backsliding. Amen. You're backsliding. Amen. You got to do it. We got to get back. Got to do what's right. It's the truth. We got to get back to doing what's right. Hey, might be some conviction, sir, that blow your mind that I got that you don't even know about. But they're mine. Okay? It might be some convictions you can't even handle yet. I'd say they're coming. I'd say they're coming. It's the truth. He knows what the fix is to eat, y'all. He knows what the fix is to eat. And we're going to learn how to eat it. And we can't mix it with nothing. That's what's going on today. We're mixing with, with something. And it's diluting it. You ever seen diluted, diluted coffee ain't no good? Put too much water in it, you just don't taste it. Yeah, you ain't no good. But the Word of God, full strength, buddy. Yeah. It'll help you. Yes. Full strength. I want full strength, maximum. Maximize that Word in your life. Listen, we've got to keep the fruit. Okay, he's coming back for an apple tree. He's wanting to see apples on it. He's coming back after a Christian. He's wanting to see Timothy. He's wanting to see Titus. Yes. He's wanting to see John. He's wanting to see Corinthians. He ain't wanting to see something we come up with. He's wanting to see the Word. I want to do it like His Word. There's some stuff I don't understand. There's some stuff we ain't said out of the Word because we don't understand it yet, how to present it and how to bring it out. But there's something about it. There's something about it. We wouldn't have it in there. Lord, help me see. 
And if we all get in that prayer position, Lord, help me see. You weep when you think you're in here, you might be the one to be able to see it. I wish people would quit thinking they ain't nothing. So we can put down. Do you know God loves you just as much as He loves me? When He called you out of darkness into His marvelous life, that's the most important thing that ever He could ever do. If there's anything, if He didn't do anything else, that returns enough to praise Him the rest of your days. To come to church confident, I'm His daughter and I'm His son. Amen. Huh? Get our eyes off of the flesh things and just keep them on the spirit. Keep them on the spirit. You know why some of us has got better things than us? Some of us just got better jobs. More income. Okay? We choose to give it to God. We thank God for it. Because I believe, I'm, I'm telling you, I just, I give it to us. It's yours, Lord. I, I believe that. But we need to, we need not get our mind trapped in that. I had my mind trapped in that one time. I did, just, but it ain't about that. It ain't about that. Don't look over and say, why do I got to drive this old car and they got that nice one? Say, thank you, Lord, for my old car. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Got me to church one more time. Took me to the store one more time. Why not? That's the way we, I'm telling you, that's the way they used to be. I believe they looked down for shoes when they used to walk to church and say, thank you, Lord, for your shoes. I didn't have to feel them rocks coming up that road. Huh? The ones that had to go barefoot, so thank the Lord for his feet. That I didn't have that I didn't have to have somebody to push me. Amen. Huh? Come on. Lord God, if God ain't simple, ain't he? Huh? Is he simple or not? He I'll tell you. He's a God you can take a plumb down. He used an ant. Yes. How much little can you go? He used an ant and said, learn from me. Learn from that little fella. Watch him a while. See what you can do. It's the truth. Come on. He's a good God. Listen, fruit, it shall remain. There's going to be when He comes. It's going to be here when He comes. I love you tonight. I just, I thank you for listening. I do. And I've been excited about tonight. Didn't know exactly everything I was going to preach. But I know one thing. I know that I come to help somebody. And there's going to be fruit. And let's stay in the Word of God so we'll have that fruit. That's the only way we're going to have it. Keep getting that chaff plugged off. Right here, listen, right here. Yes. You're working on it out through the week. Uh-huh. I've I seen it. I've seen it in the Spirit. Working on it out through the week, and it's. You ever, you ever taken what's in little nuts that you peel off that nuts on the inside of them? It's good to eat. What is that? Get them at Christmas. I don't know, but it it comes about halfway cracked and you've got to peel one of them. Hey, potassios or what it is. Hey, potassios. And I, I can see people busting open. Then here they come into church and the old word just... Huh? I can't get it. I tell you, I've seen it. i just seen people coming in and stuff just barely hanging on. Huh? One of them get up there behind that pulpit and that fan starts to blow them. Lord God, your stuff goes falling off. <laughs> I'm glad to see stuff like that. You might say, well, you're childish. Keep me childish, Lord. I goes over as a little child. I want to be like that, don't you? Big imagination. That's how I stayed out of trouble when I was little. Amen. God's good at church. But I believe He's got that fan when He comes here. I do. When you wake up in the morning and that word, that fan, it's right there. He's breaking it up. And when we come here, son, He can blow it away. He can. You'll leave out of here better than when you come. You will be more pure, have more confident. We need confident Christians this day and time. Confident that they're in the Word of God. That they can see themselves when they read it. I love you. I love you. Follow my heart. I love you. I can't say that. Never mind. I love you. He's a good God. God is a good God.